evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our January 23rd, 2019 Board of Selectmen uh, meeting. Um, I will call this meeting to order, and we will start off with a. I just I want to start off by saying thank you to our DPW department for um, doing a great job on our roads um, this past storm. It's, they were really good. I could tell the difference coming from Northampton over into Hadley. It's always much better. So um, thank you for that, and I do appreciate it. And uh, thank you to the men and uh, out there plowing and taking care of those streets it's, uh, and staying safe. So thank you. We will jump into our consent agenda, which we have minutes from uh, September 19th. Wow. Uh, September 15th, October 3rd, and October 11th of 2018. We have warrants AP 1928, AP 1928-S, AP 1928-V, AP 1929, PR 1927, PR 1928, and PR 1929. We will take up the park and clerk appointment with some discussion. Yes. yes. Um, and we will also, on the Hadley Police Department, do that afterwards. We have a DLTA grant application for a rural policy report. Do we need to discuss that, or we can just add it into the consent agenda? What's, what's going on? I've got a little discussion on it. All right, well, then we'll just take the other ones for now. <coughs> Motion? Uh, motion to approve the ones that... The minutes, the, the minutes and the warrants. Yep. A second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, we have the. We'll take the Hadley Police Department. Um, I don't see Sue here, but shall we start with the appointments and the resignation? Sue, I don't think Sue's coming tonight. Sue's not coming tonight. Okay. Do you want to discuss well, that first, the parking? Whichever you prefer. Okay. Mitch, you want to do that first? Sure. Sure. Lieutenant. So, uh, October 29th, 1987, special town meeting, Article 11, the voters um, approved to adopt the Mass General Law, Chapter 90, Section 20A, which is essentially allows for us to issue parking tickets. It um, talks about the format of the citation, the wording that has to be on it, so on and so forth. I'm not going to bore everyone with the with the finite details. But following that being adopted by the town, uh, the town never appointed a parking clerk following that, and that re is required in order for parking tickets to be enforced beyond <coughs> the issuance. So for instance, if someone's issued a parking ticket and they don't pay it, right now, nothing happens. If you go over to Northampton, you get a parking ticket, if you go over to Amherst, you get a parking ticket, and you don't pay it, they will put a hole in your driver's license, your registration, until you pay it. So, as of right now, uh, our department does not issue very many parking tickets because there's not really any, nothing behind it. So, um, my suggestion would be to uh, to appoint Miss Wawatsky, and after um, a lot of conversation with her, we've already worked out a lot of the details. We've already worked out the revenue and the expenses in regards to it. Um, we had a meeting today with Linda, Joan, Mary Beth, and Sue. We worked out all of those logistics. Um, so essentially that is uh, what it's all about. The only thing in regards to what I uh, provided prior to the meeting was um, some fee suggestions. <coughs> and in speaking to Sue today, there's one <coughs> modification that I'd like to make to those fees. And um, the, I made a recommendation for a late payment of $15 and then a $25 um, fee if it's reported to the Registry of Motor Vehicles. And I'd like to make those both just $15 as opposed to that $25 fee. Okay. Can you give us some examples of where we would issue any parking? Yes, yeah, so it, for, for instance, uh, handicap parking, any of the business establishments, fire lanes, things like that. Uh, we can issue them at the reservoirs. We can issue them in situations uh, for uh, 
just you know parking too close to an intersection. Uh, there are some places laid right out in town bylaws that their um, parking is prohibited. Certain streets. Um, so what about snow removal? Are we doing anything with that this year? <coughs> um, making sure that people are not parking on the streets, say on. West Street or Middle Street or any other street so that, you know, they're not inhibiting the plowing. Um, are we issuing any fines and are the DPW people calling the police when they have a problem with um, people parking on the street at that time? Yes. I find that maybe with Eslon and you know, either side of the street that sometimes there might be some parking. Um, so I'm just wondering if if we're doing anything about that area historically we have so few problems with parking during snow times mm -hmm. that we're able to address them pretty much we're able to to run the license plate and get a phone number or contact the person and get the car moved okay i mean we're not we're not like give a warning correct mm -hmm. as opposed to towing them, as opposed to towing them. i mean okay. it's 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 so infrequent that we have problems okay that's good and then that would be able to like people parking in handicap that don't have the stickers and things like that we can now it would be more worth our while to tag them for you you aren't now where you are we are very very infrequently though okay any questions for that make a motion to approve the uh, <coughs> appointment of the parking clerk and the implementation of parking fees is verbally amended by lieutenant cook today Second. Okay. All those in favor? Is this Aye. all going to be? Uh, I got one more question. I said, was there any more questions? And I know. Jump out <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, the fees you're going to pay, Sue? Well, it's part. It'll be part of our job. No, cover Just part of our job. Recoup the cost. Yeah. She already does the excise tax with the deputy collector, and so this would just be along the same and lines. Why, and what's your reasoning for not leaving at 25 if you've got to contact the registry? <coughs> So, in speaking with Sue, the deputy collector already assesses a fee for that, mm -hmm. for the marking, for the what they call the marking portion, which puts the hole in the license and the registration. Okay. How those all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. <laughs> Unanimous. Okay. And Chief Mason, would you like to? I, can we just accept the resignation of yes. uh, Thomas Hoodick? You can do that first if you like. I have a motion to accept the resignation for Officer Huddock and thank him for his service while he was with us. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And now, Chief Mason, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, seated before you is uh, Harry Santiago. I'm sure he looks familiar to you. He's been with us uh, for a little over a year now. Um, uh, Harry's been through a few uh, full time hiring processes with us and um, we are very, you know, very happy that we sad to lose Tom, but uh, in losing Tom, it opened up a spot, and we're finally able to bring uh, Harry aboard. We've been kind of hoping and waiting for something to come up where we can uh, we can bring him on board for us because he's been um, such a hard worker, um, a nice kid. People just, you know, everybody likes him in the department. We just can't say enough good things about him. Um, since completing our field training program, he's worked nearly full-time uh, hours filling vacancies in our schedule, which, as you know, saves us uh, overtime money. Uh, he's one of the harder, harder workers that we have, and he's very highly regarded by his peers. Um, he is the only officer <coughs> that uh, I have ever sponsored through the Reserve Intermittent Academy. Um, our insurance company made some changes and uh, don't allow us to do that anymore. Uh, luckily, we got him through before uh, before we found out about that. Uh, prior to working for our agency, he also uh, worked for his father, and he drove a school bus for uh, Holyoke Chicopee Springfield Head Start program. Uh, with your approval, if you uh, accept the recommendation tonight, we would anticipate uh, Harry starting with us full time on February 23rd, um, because he does require a waiver and approval from the MPTC Academy. They have meetings once a month and it would be just before that that we would request his waiver. It would allow him to continue to work for us for nearly a year before we'd have to send him to an academy. So with all that, I would like to recommend uh, Harry Santiago as our newest full-time police officer. Does he have to sign on the dotted line? You're going to stay with us for a while? He's going to do it just <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Motion to approve uh, Harry Santiago as a full-time officer. Second. 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 Second.
Second. Any further questions of Eric? No? No. no? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Feel free to come to the meetings anytime. Stay longer if you can. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you at budget time. Okay. Hey. Chased everyone out. What's that? We chased everyone out. Yeah. I know. That's perfect timing. Intimidate the police. It shows well. Oh. Let's see, we have to go back to consent. We still have another DLTA. It's a real report. David, do you want to? Yeah, so for, <clears throat> for decades, uh, we in Western Massachusetts have complained that policies coming out of Boston are right sized for communities within 495 but don't fit very well with rural uh, communities and rural concerns and needs are often not recognized in uh, Boston so Governor Charlie Baker decided to put together a rural <laughs> policy um, action and task the uh, regional planning agencies in the rural parts of Massachusetts to put together an analysis of what are the particular concerns, needs, and, and uh, uh, attributes of rural communities that are different from urban or suburban communities or maritime communities. Uh, rural planning agencies have done a lot of good work in order to bring this uh, analysis uh, to fruition, but uh, there is no money to write up the results in order to uh, implement the actions. And, policy recommendations. Town of Hadley has submitted four grant applications for direct technical local assistance through Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, thank you very much, for a study of affordable housing in town, of OSHA compliance, uh, financial management policy manual, and uh, there was uh, the verification of the new flood insurance maps that are being proposed by FEMA. After the deadline of the DLTA, uh, it turns out that apparently there was some additional money available. And so the town of Hadley was in invited to submit a fifth application to provide the funding in order to write up the results of these regional planning agencies on this particular important topic to all Western Massachusetts communities. So jointly with the town of Blandford and the town of Pelham, Hadley has now submitted an application for that fifth DLTA, and I'm just asking for your formal endorsement to, to, to do so. Any questions? No, it's in Pioneer Valley Plains getting a little bit more involved with this now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and Furcog, <coughs> and Worcester, okay. and Berkshire. Mm -hmm. All right, so motion. I can make the motion to approve this uh, DLTA request. Second. And David will be our contact person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All those is in favor? Already? He already is, but I will continue mm -hmm. with. Because I see the yes. deadline's January 11th. You already submitted this? I submitted it pending their approval tonight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All okay. those in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect. Okay. I think that takes care of the. Um, Consent agenda. Uh, Mass Trail grants application. Are you someone with us? Patty Gambarini yes. from Patty. Hi. 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 Welcome. Hi. Nice to see you. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice to see you too. Thank you for having me tonight. Sure. Um, I had talked briefly with David. Um, I'm working with um, the trustees and with Kestrel Land Trust on the idea of um, some trail linkages from, are you familiar with the Huntington Road boat ramp? Mm -hmm. um, that DCR owns that property and PVPC was involved in a project to build that 
three car parking location there. And the idea is to potentially make a connection between there up to Mount Warner. Um, Kestrel <coughs> Land Trust has some property that's referred to as the Dyer property on the eastern side of Route 47. So explore potential linkages um, to that and then across that property um, over to Mount Warner Road and then creating a new access um, with um, some steps up to the Salamander Loop Trail um, that, that goes around Mount Warner and then potentially have um, an outlook because you get to the top of Mount Warner and there's really you know, nothing, nothing to see. So the idea would be to create a spot where you go for a view. Um, and the other viewing area would be there's a small hill on the Kestrel Land Trust property um, so a little explorer's loop in there. I have a very conceptual map here. Um, there's a lot of linkages that need to be explored um, up Route 47. Um, some informal agreements currently with landowners between Kestrel's property and Mount Warner Road. So we need to explore that a little more. Um, and then certainly out to the outlook. Um, the trustees have some trail alignments um, they want to try to resolve as well on the Salamander Loop Trail. So the idea is putting together a package that um, to the Mass Trails program um, that uh, involves looking at um, the, li the potential linkages here, um, permitting design and surveying for um, you know eventual construction of certain parts of this. Um, we're not asking for construction monies at this point because um, we also need the determination of probable costs so that potentially a next round of max, mass trails grants we could apply to um, for the construction side of the work. So um, I don't know if you want to take a quick look at this, but I have a letter this evening of support. Let's see, where did I put that? Think it's here. Does it take away the snowmobile trail? No, no, no. In one it spot, it sort of coincides. Trail, they're still using that snowmobile. Trail. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> one of the landowners between the Kestrel Land Trust property and uh, Mount Warner Road agreed to um, having a little bridge built, and we did that um, some time back. The snowmobilers actually built it, but it was also to serve um, hikers moving through that area. The only um, question I have is if it uh, looks like there's some water department easements that are used for access. Is that right? On, on Mount Warner? <coughs> okay. Yes. And yeah, go ahead. No, and my only concern is that um, if we were to accept the grant money, it wouldn't inhibit us from um, servicing or accessing the either the wells or the tanks up there <coughs> or ma maintaining that. I just don't want to be on the hook for, you know. This, road, this road's for a tank, and i got a major concern with the safety of the water tanks in our town and access to them or by them uh, with all the things that are going on in this world today it's uh, I don't even want to think about this right now what could happen mm -hmm. I think um, w one of the things is that we want to correct is the current trail alignment you know sort of the trail route that's there um, you come out at this bend on Mount Warner Road and you head south on Mount Warner Road and you're supposed to access this or connect to the Salamander Loop Trail by going up that water department easement. Mm -hmm. um, so the signage there, I went out there with Bill Kelly probably more than a year ago now. Um, the signage is really confusing there. It sort of just says here's the access to the trail but then you know, do not enter because it's water supply. So this it, would try to correct that. It's supposed that. to be protected around the yeah. tank for mm -hmm. a certain number of feet, and nobody's supposed to access it except for water department personnel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a major concern. So it sounds like this is addressing that, though. <clears throat> yeah. No, it's not. They're still using the same trail. They're still going to connect through that. Well, this is sort of, you know, not the idea is because it that also presents a danger for hikers walking on that section of Mount Warner Road. So the idea is to sort of stop using that um, 
road, you know, that easement for water department and build um, the stairs going up the side so there's a direct crossing um, from where you come out on Mount Warner Road, more or less, to that hillside there. Yeah, my, my only concern was I just wanted to make sure that we would be able to do whatever we needed as far as maintenance goes. Where with the bike trail with DCR, I mean, even though it's running through the town, we can't touch it no matter what. Basically, there, you know, as far as dealing with the levees and the flood system and everything else. So I just don't want to take a grant that would keep us from maintaining our own infrastructure. That was my only concern. Right now, that trail only crosses the road. Correct? It doesn't really go along it for that long. From what I remember, uh, there's a crossing of the, the town easement road up to the water tanks, but... Well, I think you actually walk on it for a short while. You do yeah, walk on right it for until just a little you get bit. To the and, and that's trail. okay as long as yeah. you're not restricted yeah. from doing what we need oh, to do. Oh, you mean from yeah. from here up to the Salamander Loop Trail? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do walk on it there. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I'm all for connecting them. I just want to make sure we can... Do so that's where the gates are. Yeah, there's a gate right there. Here. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't think the the grant would <coughs> okay. preclude anything like that. I mean, that really ties into, and I don't know what your agreements yeah. are with the trustees okay. and so access and the easement the and you know what you really use protections might be afforded no, the water tank in that. terms of you right know is the public access. access. Oh, okay. Yeah. Between them, and they want to get rid um, of that. Yeah, <laughs> I can access. I can mention that to our project partners as okay. a concern okay. and. I just hate to run into what we have with the DCR and the, the bike trail work. <laughs> it, it's, it's off limits for the town to do anything with, you know, if, as far as maintenance goes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <coughs> so um, I do have a letter um, that I started to pull out, and this uh, would be a letter of support from the town for the grant application, and the three primary partners are Pioneer Valley Planning, the trustees and Kestrel Land Trust. Um, and sort of, I just, I'll, I'll pass this out, but I wanted to um, just uh, indicate sort of the pieces that we would be looking um, to the town for. And that is um, sort of one idea is um, perhaps a walking path along Route 47. Um, you know, looking at that right away, exploring the potential there, um, as well as with, you know, some of the landowners there. Um, so this, that's really an exploration thing along Route 47. And then the other piece is at Mount Warner Road to maybe um, do some sort of pedestrian crossing or at least signage for motorists warning that there are hikers crossing. Um, and I talked with Marlo Warner before he left about the potential for there's a pull-off parking area and people just you know are pulling off there now but maybe formalizing that to make it a little safer for people to get in and out of that area so those would all be things we would want to explore in the grant with you And so, you know, I don't know what the best uh, approach is to this. I know this is the first time you're seeing this letter. And so, you know, if you want to think about it, the deadline is next Friday. So if I had um, something from the town by next Wednesday, you know, it would be fine. Not this Friday. No, February 1st. Okay. Yeah. I support the idea. The only thing I would be concerned about was uh, any money that it would cost the town as far as building trails or getting involved with with, with um, uh, landowners there. If that's something that um, the trust or PB's uh, you know, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission want to work out, that'd be okay. I just wouldn't want the town. Right. That. I'd like to yeah. clarify what the no trespassing means around the tanks and what the area is that needs to be preserved up there. Well, I think we certainly could According address, to mass we general could address law. that. Yeah. yeah, that's our purview to address. And it sounds like what you're looking for is a letter of support. So for the grant. Even, you know, to David's yeah. concerns, we would still have ample time if it came back and there were other costs, we would have further conversation. Yeah, I think the only cost would be, you know, I mean, it, it would be whoever from the town, like Bill Kelly has walked with me on Mount Warner Road. Mm -hmm. Marlo talked with me a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, about this project, you know, just staff time here and there to 
talk about things, explore them, maybe bring them back to you to talk about. Um, and then when we go into the next phase of construction, we might come back to you and talk about sort of, you know, whether there are, what opportunities there are, what our grant request should be, and we can, you know, explore that in the next phase. I'll make a motion to approve the letter of support. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? I would just suggest that you do have a conversation with our new DPW director, Chris Orkifer, who is behind there. And he can, you know, you can have contact with him okay. uh, if anything comes up, especially where it concerns the water tanks and, and that property in that area. Yeah. Okay. And making sure that we do stay within the uh, mass general laws of the water tanks and water protection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Anything else? David, did you have something you want no, to say? No, it's, it's just you took the words right out of my oh, mouth. For a change? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Great. Thank you. Do you want us to sign this tonight? Uh, well, it, it probably needs to be on your letterhead. Yeah, let, oh, me, okay. yeah. let me work yeah. on it. All right. Great. Thank you. Do you want me to just Thank sign you. or do we all need to sign Can it? you email a copy to David? Or did you yes, already? I will. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Trust is not going to be here with us tonight. Um, so we will go down, we'll do the sub fire station afterwards. We have the library and uh, senior center here with us this evening. So uh, and I can represent the sub fire <coughs> station. So, how about if we start with the senior center and where are we? The senior center went out to bid publicly on Monday. Mm -hmm. We had a meeting today at the Senior Center. We had 18 interested contractors show up to ask questions and look at the site. So we're moving Good. forward. Great. Great. I just have a couple of things to add, too. Um, I was 15 minutes late for the meeting and everybody was gone, so it was a quick <laughs> meeting. Um, <laughs> Uh, one thing that we'd like to request on the library committee is that we have a special select board meeting on February 27th, and that is just because that is the day that um, we are going to have all the bids in. We get them in on the 20th, and we could vote on that day and get the project moving as opposed to waiting a couple weeks until the next select board meeting. You said the library. I know that's what I was confused. Oh, I'm sorry. Senior <laughs> Center. Sorry, <laughs> oh, Senior okay. Center. No, I just, I didn't Not the library. I'm okay. sorry. That's I'm okay. just, yeah. <laughs> thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking two <laughs> different thoughts here. You guys are all here from the library. <laughs> and so, yeah, Senior Center. The Senior Center bids are due <laughs> on the 20th. We'll have them all digested by the 27th. Vote and move forward. Well, we could I'll be in possibly. Disney, but yeah, you guys can. You'll be in DC? I'll be in Disney. Oh, Disney. Oh, Disney. Disney. Better than DC. Yeah, it certainly is. <laughs> um, shall we move our select board meeting to the 27th then? Well, David would be missing the whole <coughs> meeting then if we did that. Yeah, I mean, but if you guys need to meet to vote on uh, the, the contract, go ahead. Yeah, right now you have meetings scheduled for the 6th and the 13th. So why, we'd be why did we do the 13th? Uh, because that's when the warrant closes. Right. And then the following week was school vacation week for some folks. Okay, so we weren't doing it that one. Yeah. Oh, we aren't doing the 20th? No. I don't have it. No. Yeah. I could do the 20th, but that's, yeah. Um, yeah. So we could have a quick meeting on the 27th then, too? Yep. Yeah. That would just help, you know, get everything moving quickly. Just add a meeting to it. Yeah. Are you available for the 27th? Okay. We could then patch you in from Disney. Yeah. That's fine. You want to stay there? <laughs> sure. You have to be wearing Mickey Mouse ears. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's do that then for what time do we want to do that? Six? We'll do six. We'll do an early meeting that night? Sure. Okay. And it, yeah. Mm -hmm. 6 p.m. Want to do 6.30? Okay. <clears throat> 6 or 30 is good. Yeah, I find 6 p.m. hard too, so. Well, I know, because I just get out at 5 too, so. Let's do 6 30 on the 27th for the Senior Center opening the bids. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and then just one thing to let you guys know of at our last building committee meeting um, we assigned 
subcommittees. So we're going to have a weekly construction subcommittee that meets at the site with the contractors and all that um, to talk about the construction and get updates. Um, I'm going to be on that committee. Jane's going to be on that committee. And Suzanne, do you remember if anybody else was going to be on? I think that was it right now. Um, so we'll have that, but we'll also have the finance subcommittee, and that will be a monthly meeting. Um, and that will be where we're really talking about a lot of the change orders and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And right now, we voted as the Senior Center Building Committee that that finance committee can approve change orders up to $20,000. We thought that was a good number from Phil uh, based on those things, or based on his experience. Um, and that's not just a blank check, like we can approve any change order that comes in. It's we have the authority to approve up to that amount. There's some type of law that has I to say change orders dollars. have to come through the select board. <laughs> this is why I'm talking about it, because I don't yeah. know if we need to vote to give that kind of authority to this finance subcommittee and or when, what those when limits are. I was on are. the building committee for the school, elementary school, we had to bring all change orders to the select board. So Good. one of the reasons yeah. Bill wanted to do this was to not have to wait for a yeah. week or two weeks and slow down the process. Yeah, this actually yes. came up at our um, yeah. library building <coughs> meeting last night. Last night. And um, now it just happens that Mark Sullivan's suggestion was he said 7,500 to 10,000 was the area that he would <coughs> target, but for the same reasons. And we were going yeah. down the same path of having a Mm -hmm. more frequently so well, we're hoping there's not going to be that many change orders that would need to go through yeah we're hoping there aren't that many but mm -hmm. you know they have have in the budget. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. that's your Same. that's an old rule 25 percent of the project 25 percent mm -hmm. that's your upper cap for change orders unless there's some sort of emergency mm -hmm. yeah but it should be up to the board not up, up to the committees well, what he's asking is for I'm asking the, for that authority, I guess. Delegation mm -hmm. of the authority. Right now, it's the select board. Um, it's and not, it, and it's not really about being non-transparent or anything about that. It's just mm -hmm. so that we can make decisions quickly and move forward instead of having to get the select board together and then try to process those changes. I think the library is going to be looking for the same thing. <coughs> so. <coughs> Sounds like there are two parts to this vote if you're going to take it, one of which is the delegation. Uh, and the other one is the suspension of your own policy that all change orders have to come in front of you and only the select board are authorized to, uh, to approve or disapprove for change orders. 20,000 does seem a little rich. I was thinking on the line of like 5,000, and the reason I say that number is because anything above that would be a substantial change order and I think needs to come back to the, to the board. Um, and I, mean, I don't see, we have plenty of meetings. If we need to put more meetings, we need to meet once a week for the next six months, then I, I'm all for that rather than, you know, letting the committees have free will at this. It, it's, it's something that everybody, we, we need to be open with all, all this process from start to finish. Can I, can it's I all we've been through already. Especially with change orders, I think I'd still like to keep that into play for the select board. Can I ask a process question? I'm just confused and I don't mean this to sound in any kind of negative way, but if the select board isn't involved in the budgeting of the process, like what would be the expectation of the group coming forward with the change order, right? And I, I don't mean that with any disrespect. I just mean that the building committees are managing that budget day to day. Mm -hmm. The select board is not, you know, involved in those building budgets. And then when we come to you with a change order, then what would be the expectation of what we present to you about why we would need that change order? Do you see what I'm saying? I'm just trying to make it a process so right. that it's a well, it's a good process for the ultimately it's the select board that's answering to the taxpayers. No, I agree. Board, yeah, yeah. No, so I agree. Why. I'm no, just it's thinking really all our, if all you're put of elected officials that are answering no, to the just, people. She's no, no. asking how would one go yeah. about it. Right. I'm saying that if someone comes before you with a change order, 
Um, and the treasurer should actually be involved with this process also. So oh, once, you know, that's another issue I think that we're missing that piece there. Yeah. Right. Um, because of her doing the borrowing and things like that. So uh, I, I think change orders somehow need to be brought you know, between us and, yes. and at that time the treasurer also. Because I feel like she knows the whole... Exactly. Right. Yes. That's, the, that's kind of what I'm missing. Be as yes. Thank you. as possible with this process throughout the whole thing. Start to finish that. I do think so, you will so, have, well, no, I was going to say, you will have minor issues. Exactly. And so that's why I'd be okay with, you know, 5,000 well, something along, along yeah. those lines. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm even up to 10. And then I agree with Molly on that. Just that check with the treasurer that we have that kind of margin for. Well, I think, to be honest, I, I, I'll just speak for myself, not for anyone else in this room, but I'm a trustee chair of the library, right? So if anything goes wrong, like you, Everyone in town is going to be mad at yeah. me. So checks and balances are good. Right. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to checks and balances, right? Like, because I'm, I, every night I am like, oh, if we make a mistake, what happens? Like, I think it's important, but I do think that it's important that the treasurer really be formally part of the process because she really does know what's coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. well, she knows the money coming in, the money yes. going out, yeah. and all the bills and everything go to her. So. Pardon? And the same, one thing we heard, or I heard, when we were discussing this this process was the idea of designating somebody or something for these small, you know, whether it's five, seventy, five hundred, ten thousand uh, for changes, but then um, bundling them up every, you know, week, every month, and bringing them up to the trustees, to the select board, to say, here's what's been done. So I mean, it is after the fact, but it's like it's not like six months down the road when everything's well, done. Well, I think, I think in the yeah. process here, I think we need to involve the treasurer to see how she wants mm -hmm. the bills to p be presented. We yeah, always I, had to give I, the bills ahead of time when we were doing the building of the school. That yeah. would make me feel better. Like, you know, I don't I, know how it makes yeah. the seniors, but as the, you know, I, really, I... She pays the bills. I, she I borrows like. the money. Mm -hmm. She definitely needs to be involved in so this process. We, could we table the request and, until we have a chance to bring Linda in? And then, mm -hmm. then would that be okay? So well, we I would, could. I would say too. We do have the OPM, you know, which I think is That's different true, than yeah. probably what we had with the schools. Is they no, are no, no, no we, we had, had an OPM, OPM and okay. we had the, we had a clerk of the works. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. we had both. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And we had the and we had the what do you call them? building inspector? Yeah, I'm in favor of streamlining, but maybe it just begs a little well, bit more conversation in them. Yeah, maybe yeah. we can put together a little bit better of a plan of the process and make that exactly. clear to and the our OPMs. Make it the OPMs. same. Yeah, make it the same for everybody. Or is it the same? So we have to sign all kinds of stuff to authorize payment from the grant. Yeah. So because the grant was awarded to the trustees, even though we're part of the town, so mm -hmm. is this the same? I mean, those are questions I would ask the treasurer. It's do still goes through the treasurer yeah. even your grants go through the treasurer the money goes out through the treasury you know so yeah. that really needs to be a part of it definitely I think, and then we're gonna have the same issue with the substation too correct yeah, yeah. I don't I, see any reason not to delay since we haven't broken ground and come to any problems yeah yet. so right. get it solved correctly yeah. 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 I mean we're, we're, we're going gonna I think it's a good plan yeah. mm -hmm. we're gonna have another meeting on the 6th of uh, February we could have Linda come in then and have you know, have a conversation that night. Yeah, and then I just, so you know. So we're all on the same page. I have the same thing with the sub fire station, mm -hmm. so we're all going to be on the same be good. playing be field. Good mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. Should then the treasurer be part of the finance subcommittee on all the projects? No. Well, she would say no. Because, <laughs> then, well, well, no, but I mean, basically what we're doing is we're dragging <laughs> What we're going to do is we're going to set up a process with Linda, see how she wants to do things. Exactly. She doesn't have to be at every meeting, but she does have to be informed. Right. Okay. Maybe okay. she's a sign off on. before you get exactly. to the meeting. Mm -hmm. Who knows? So I mean, let's let her set let her help set yes. the process of how mm -hmm. she wants to handle this because again, that's where it all is going to end up in the, eventually. I guess my point is we just have to. If we want these subcommittees to be effective, we have to give them some authority to make decisions and do things. Well, let's, Otherwise, but let's, the let's, select board let's is let basically Linda, that subcommittee. With the money part of it, okay. You know, I think that needs to definitely be a part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, the other other committees can certainly do their job without an overseeing of, of anybody else. Yeah. But I think about getting the process in place with the treasurer, 
um, and how she wants to handle the bills and how much she feels is an appropriate amount for you know, somebody if we can to. Set something, yeah, we probably can set something up like the warrant. We do a, mm -hmm. when she sends us a warrant number, we can electronically say yes or no and sign it when we bring it in and then approve it at our next meeting. You know, I, I mean, don't think it's going to be a big problem to that, bring that's everybody what in involved with this. Phil is going to have together that you know, a list of change orders that he would be presenting yeah. to the finance mm -hmm. subcommittee mm -hmm. that we would then be approving. So it would be very similar. Mm -hmm. We'd just be presenting the info. You know, I just, I have enough meetings all week long. I don't want to mm -hmm. have one meeting a month that's the finance subcommittee and try to make decisions and then have the select board overwrite that stuff. Like if we're going to do two well, things at the same meeting, let's just have one meeting. But we're Instead gonna, of we're gonna set the things. process where it's not gonna be that cumbersome. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's mm -hmm. see what's I'm gonna come out of our next meeting where she has input and we'll okay. give her a heads up uh, before that meeting on you know, coming prepared on what she wants us to do. Yeah. She's she's in the know right now. She's in the uh, know. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. She'll see you on the stairs. <laughs> good, I'm glad she's watching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Did she say that was a good thing for her to be chiming in? Can she text you on no, that you one? Don't, you don't need <laughs> she <to>. smiled. <laughs> she smiled. Okay. Smiled. All right. So that's so that's a good thing. So does that work now? And we'll just make sure everybody's on the same page. Okay. I, I can keep going here. Sorry. <laughs> keep going. Um, Even though you were late for your meeting. Keep I know. Going. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, I run the business, and S was hitting the fan oh, there, so I, that's I what know. made me that's late. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so the next one, I don't know if we want to go into this now because it's later in our meeting, but just about, um, you know, signing the lease agreement for the alternate location of the senior center. Where are we going to pay for that from? We can table that for now because <laughs> that will probably come up later. Um, but one thing I did want to talk about, if that does, you know, if we do move forward with that and want to tear down the hooker school um, sooner rather than later is just... Uh, you know, I, I just want to have some clarification, I guess, on the select board here, just who's in charge of the town hall modifications and um, all those things, because I feel like, and this goes to Christopher <laughs> as well over there, because he's on board now, which has changed since the last time we talked about it. Um, municipal Building Committee was kind of spearheading it a little bit, but I feel like it's transitioned over to the DPW and just want to clarify is that kind of the direction we're headed now? DPW is kind of spearheading these modifications and the moves, um, and it's a little bit outside of the municipal building committee's hands. I don't think we're going to be doing a whole lot of modifications. Okay. Um, I think that uh, Chris, uh, Mr. Ogafer, has uh, agreed to have Gary Berg uh, help with the transition until June. Correct, and David? You were in on that. Do you want to uh, fill us in on that? So. Um, <laughs> Initially, we had talked about 20 something thousand dollars worth of modifications to town hall to make temporary office space and to bring everybody over here. Um, because um, Linda and Joan were pretty flexible, we were able to knock some of that cost off. They're not going to modify their office, and we were just making some changes to the front part of the, the building, the interior part of the building. Um, at this point, we've, we've got a plan to where we're going to move everybody. Um, once we sign the, the lease for uh, Most Holy Redeemer, uh, we'll be all set. Gary is working on um, not only getting estimates from contractors to do what's needed in, in this building, but we've also been working on uh, what's needed to get Hooker School cleared out. Um, we had an auctioneer come today and look at the, the um, contents of the building to see how, whether we could sell some of those um, in order to generate some revenue rather than have to pay to throw them away. Um, so things are things are moving along there. Um, and while we're on this topic, can I talk about the surplus declaring surplus property? Um, I'd like to make a motion that we declare the remaining items that will not be needed to or will not be moved to the temporary senior center or the new senior center as surplus, so that way we can sell them off or dispose of them as as needed. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> and so initially we were going to um, have them inventory all these items and, and try to sell them on Municipid or one of the other sites. And what we found is a lot of the items are 
junk. <laughs> and uh, surplus that we've uh, gathered from UMass and other locations over the years. We have more metal file cabinets than we will five towns could ever use. But um, so any luck. Yeah. <laughs> so if uh, any money that we can get out of it to defray the cost of the move or of storage or rent, whatever, um, is better than paying to dispose of those items. So um, as far as um, the timeline, I think uh, we're looking at middle of March as a yes, move rather March. than April, yes. if possible, if, possible. Um, if we can get everything just to kind of give a little bit more leeway um, yes. and margin for error there. Um, and a lot of stuff to move. There, there's a lot of stuff and um, <laughs> a lot of stuff to be done. But do you want to talk about that for a Yes, we, we also had a meeting this, uh, this morning uh, in departments involved and um, we'll be meeting in two weeks. And uh, sometime within the next two weeks, the renovations that will be done in this building will be complete. Mm -hmm. And then we also uh, providing, asking various departments that are involved to give us a list when we meet in the next two weeks. The items they're going to be moving, the items they will prefer to be stored in the storage. And then we will be providing them um, boxes or items that they may need to move so we be able to move them and uh, in a <coughs> orderly fashion we also as you said we also told them that our thinking is March middle of March so that if somehow we have elements or events that may be beyond our control we have those two other weeks to meet the deadline so it was a good meeting this morning right. and I, I think I'd say 95% of the departments are content with their accommodations. They're not ideal, but they'll get the job done for the year, year and a half that they need to be there. So we're still working on one. So I have a question about storage in the library and discussion with the trustees and Patrick about what we store in the library and how we store it. We are the stewards of our building, and we do really want to help. We do really want to help. But I think we need to think carefully about where things go in the library and who has access to the library 24 hours a day and um, how we can best make that work. And we would, we have to, as, as a group of trustees, vote on that as stewards of our building. <coughs> I'm sure we can figure it out, yeah. but I just would like us to be part of the process so that we can vote on it and we can make sure we can help. So we looked at the upstairs the other day and it looks like uh, if the space was condensed down the upstairs right now about 20 to 30 percent is actually being utilized for storage and other desk space and, and other <coughs> things. Um, the idea is about 400 square feet in that corner uh, where the, the utility box is uh, for Hadley Media to be in that corner. Yes, we um, already approved that. Right. Um, and I think um, Tim was going to tape off on just on the floor so you guys got an idea of where <coughs> they would be. And then we've got some um, cubicle dividers to kind of wall that off so it would kind of help with sound and kind of divide the area up so they wouldn't be encroaching on your space. Um, and then the other items that I believe were going to be up there was is Hadley Historical only. Um, I know that there had been talk about planning board and stuff like that, but uh, I think we wanted to avoid that so that way people wouldn't be in and out of the library at all hours. So I think well, that's that's contrary to what was discussed this morning. And you know we're we're fine with that. I'm trying to figure out for my part where we're trying to get a sense from Gary in terms of square footage, like how many cabinets are coming in, what kind of furniture they're talking about bringing in, some very heavy pieces of furniture storage. Um, you know, flat piles and things like that, and moving them up to the top. And I'm wondering if it might be more appropriate, both for the long-term storage as well as the weight issues, if they were brought to the basement of the library, and we had a secure area down there to work with. So I don't know, but I think we, again we need to have the meeting to talk about specifically what's being brought in and how it affects what we're doing. Yeah, well, what we heard this morning was the Hadley Media, which we've known about all along. Right. And then the, uh, the Hopkins Fund, uh, which is a minor, yeah, it's like one book ten boxes yeah. or something like that. That should not be a problem. And then the planning board, and that was a little bit. I mean, they weren't sure about how what they needed to 
put where, what could be stored at Russell or not. Yeah. Um, but it's so potentially they were looking at that top floor. We also. looked at the planning board items the other day, and the planning board will probably yell at me for saying this, but it's it's not as bad as it seems. There's we, we went in there, there's actually a ton of empty cabinets and stuff in there, so that, that giant space in Hooker School is not actually <coughs> full completely. They do have a lot of plants, but I think um, it, in this building partic in particular, there should be a room to store a good amount of those files. So, so maybe we'll, we'll need to put some of that maybe in the basement or something like that. But I don't think we're going to have nearly as much as we had initially thought. I, I think the concern for us is access <coughs> right. to the building 24 hours right. a day by any, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and I agree do we have to should. provide any protection for it? You know, so does this have to be under lock and key? It's because mm -hmm. most of our library is accessible. We no, the locked mm -hmm. file cabinets, because that's all they have now. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, there, there wouldn't be anything different. Okay. So. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll clear. There's no goal. Thank you. Right. Okay. There's no goal. <laughs> <laughs> if you find some, let us know. One person's goal. True. All the gold so sitting downstairs that. in Hooker School and it has no value. <laughs> so. This issue about the planning board. Yes. It sounds like that may may be a misunderstanding because I can, right. all along we were trying not to have the planning board up there. Right. Yes, at the end we, there was a gentleman who was at the meeting, Jim. 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 At the end he, he agreed with us, Tim is gonna come up with a, a sort of drawings uh, with it and use, use, the, use the cut to be able to uh, impose some of the drawers into the storage yeah. right yeah and uh, based on what we think we think if not 100 percent at least 90 percent should be able to right yeah right. I, th I think there was a lot of empty furniture that was giving the impression we needed a lot more space than we did yeah. where have the planning board been approached for your plans to put them on discs and have them scan yeah the we, computer? we have done that we i bought them how a much? scanner we bought them a scanner yeah well i heard they haven't done very much with it can, can they maybe get uh, an intern from UMass possibly to do some scanning or plans and get it on a computer? Yeah, so they a have a chip or a disk. They have the equipment, they just need the human power to do it. But it, it won't happen before the move. No, 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 but no. I, if, no, it's a long if, term wherever, plan, yeah. if wherever the scanner is going, if we could get somebody to start that. Well, if we go with this. Um, IT grant that David supplied for this laser fish with Northampton. Mm -hmm. That's actually the, their planning board drove it so that they would have access to that kind of thing. So. I think part of the problem too is right now we don't have a place to put that information yeah. where it's easily accessible and organized. Well, so this there, system would give the us key. that. There's, yeah. they there's could scan it in, they couldn't find after yeah, 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 yeah. There's also um, the whole town sewer maps are upstairs mm -hmm. too on mm -hmm. Booker School. Yeah. You know, and if those could be scanned and, and put on a disc again or, or a thumb drive or something. But we need to get up to two thousand here, you know. We need we need manpower yeah. to do it. Right. Well that's what I'm saying. Maybe yeah. we maybe we can get some engineering students or some of the drafting students or somebody from UMass that, that are looking for something mm -hmm. something to do for credits would be a well, internships they usually yeah. can have the people work for government and yeah. you know so just so the library committee knows that we're, we're trying to put as little as possible over there. That's that's yeah, the we don't want to help them. No, we, it, we yeah. really don't. I we think the issue is access. Yeah. yeah, having a meeting ahead of time to say, okay, what are we doing? And who's yeah. going I think initially we were the people were planning on piling all kinds of junk up there, and, yeah. and yeah. <laughs> afterwards we realized that we don't really need that much space. So. Well, and it's not as big as people think right. either. <laughs> and there is the ceiling. And trying to get those stairs is no joke. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, try to move something. Yeah, those up things those are stairs. Stairs. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anything else from the senior center? I'm just going to say thank you guys for doing all that stuff, <coughs> spearheading it. So it's great. And library, how about want to bring us up to date where you are? Uh, sure. So um, we're about halfway through our final drawings. Um, we did have a meeting last night. We saw some uh, new concepts uh, for some of the space in the children's uh, area, which is just going to basically tie it all together a little bit better. It's it's nothing huge. Um, 
the, we did go before the planning board last week, last week or this week, last week, um, with our final landscape and lighting, um, so that got approval. So all systems are go, we just need to finalize our drawings, um, but we're still on schedule to go out, I guess the, the plan was to go out in a staggered fashion after the senior, so they're on, on target, we should be on target, um, so, okay. so that's good. Sounds good. We did um, discuss the, the matter of the lease. So um, last week we we got the, we saw the lease. So David sent the lease to Patrick, um, which is the first time we had seen this. So we've only really had a half an hour to talk about this. Um, we met today before this meeting. Um, we have had some changes in our trustees since then. So not everybody was completely up to speed. But I think the goal was for us at the time um, that those of us who were trustees mm -hmm. was to contribute to the the cost of housing the seniors that would be um, above and beyond what would have cost the town because we already have a senior center there's already costs associated so um, David very um, quickly provided me the information on the operating costs so I could have an idea of what what it currently costs us, um, you know, how much do we pay in oil, how much do we pay in electricity at our current place, to see what was the sort of net plus to cost to house everybody. Um, some of this I, I didn't necessarily understand what we were responsible for <coughs> versus what Most Holy Redeemer uh, was responsible for, but um, it looks as if there is um, a net difference, a net additional cost of about 26,000 <coughs> um, to the town to house the, the seniors over there. Um, so the the trustees had a um, discussion tonight. Um, it, it was not unanimous, um, but uh, the motion that was passed was that we offer to split that cost with the town. Um, so the difference between the 26,000, just so we would pay half of that. Um, but we will also say we don't know other variables that are in here. All I have to go on is the lease and the, <coughs> the sort of operating budget that I have in front of me. So, and this would be the lease for one year. We're also aware of the fact that, that most likely they will be there for more than one year. So we would be discussing this again. Mm -hmm. So I guess the other factors that would in be included would be the, the moving costs. All right. The uh, remodeling that would be done here. Right. And then, um, the utility the wiring and, yeah the wiring and the utilities and taxes over at most holy redeemer mm -hmm. is, would be the additional costs um, do we know what the taxes are roughly uh, about five thousand dollars for a year okay after yeah. we've moved in why do we have to pay taxes i thought we were tax exempt because we we're not a property. charitable organization so there's a technicality oh, that we don't we lose the tax exemption while we're yeah. there and then we have to yeah <laughs> All right. So, <coughs> oh, so, so let's so, just yeah. So, like, we didn't know about that five thousand. So, no, right. okay. so I would say that right. would make it thirty-one thousand that the town has extra paying for. Yeah. So, for. so let's just let's yeah. let's start up here yeah. first. So, big picture, um, we had the original plan, which was to <coughs> go in serial fashion, mm -hmm. right? So, if if we stuck with plan A, um, we would have broken ground on the senior center, <coughs> gone through and built the senior center. We wouldn't be incurring any rental costs, rental costs any <coughs> move costs or anything at all <coughs> during that time frame. And then the costs, what, what we would be incurring is the carrying cost of the building, right? So utilities keeping it heated. Um, and then the cost to move is going to be the cost to move no matter what. Right. So one time cost to move. What we're incurring with plan B, whatever we want to call it, is we're incurring, um, we'll, we'll wind up being potentially over $70,000 when we throw in the, the tax issue. So. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, I, I mean, about seventy-three. Seventy-three thousand plus the Actually wiring more. costs plus the remodeling costs so to relocate the 15. other. So 
So I just want to do the math because I'm getting I'm I'm getting really confused about the, where the 26. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to sure, and I have the yeah. figures in yeah. front of you. So but we so we we were never part of the discussions about remodeling or anything like that. So what mm -hmm. we had offered to help offset the cost was for the rent for the for the to house the seniors wherever or who, whomever whatever rent you're paying for. So um, so th that definitely did not factor into our costs, right. nor did this taxes. So we're looking at really about a, like $100,000 cost to, for the move. Yep. Um, and then, so what were you offsetting so to come down to the 26? So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it looks as if, so the, sorry, these are not photocopies. Um, but this is just, what I did is I extracted from what David sent me. I just mm -hmm. uh, took out the hooker-related costs I'm calling it hooker rather than senior because a lot of it is just building. Um, so if you look at the bottom, uh, so it, it looks as if, um, and I wasn't sure which number to use, the 56,850 or the 55,500. So I used the, the lower number um, mm -hmm. to, to sort of minimize the, the amount that the town would already be paying for. If you look at the far right column, um, I've just titled it Responsibility at Most Holy Redeemer. I just took a look at the lease and just tried to say, what are we still responsible for? Like, what is the Most Holy Redeemer kicking in for us? What are we getting for the $67,000 rent? Um, so it looks as if they're paying for utilities, for example. They would obviously maintain the buildings and grounds, um, things that, that we have light items allocated to. But there are other things that we would still have to pay for, custodial services, <coughs> telephone, mm -hmm. online services, I'm assuming is internet. Um, so that kind of thing. Other things I wasn't sure about. I don't know what building supplies are. I don't know what those things are. So it looks as if um, we're still on the hook. In addition to the rent that we would be paying, we're still on the hook for somewhere between fourteen and sixteen thousand um, dollars just from here. So uh, to this, I would now add the five thousand dollars in taxes that we wouldn't have to pay. Um, so I really just sort of subtracted um, those two. I those two lines you know one at a time from the 55,000 and say okay this is how much but this is our savings this represents our savings because we're no longer maintaining the hooker we're no longer paying the $18,000 a year and for oil etc um, and then we just basically subtracted those lines from the 67,000 um, to come up with the 26 and then the proposal is on the table is that we would split the difference so I, I think the call it the expert chime in here, but I think that the, the, the 55 deduction is reasonable because those are costs that we would have incurred right. with the senior center still in operation. But I think the actual the remaining amount is is much greater than. Yeah, we wouldn't deduct the 55. We would, <coughs> what we were proposing would be to deduct either 39 or 41 because right. we're recognizing that you still have you're still bringing some of those costs along with you. You right. still have to pay for the custodian. There's still things that have to be paid. Yeah. And and obviously we did not know about this taxes, so that's something I would have also added on top of it. So I would sort of reduce this thirty nine or forty one by by five thousand to say this is how much the town still has left for just the senior operation. So I did not pull out what what does it cost to run Hadley Media? What you know what I didn't pull out any of those types of things. I just kind of rolled. I figured that the senior center was the largest cost, but um, I would go through that same exercise if you're now asking us to pay for renovations for town hall for the planning board. You know, I would, I would go through that same exercise um, and, and bring that before the trustees to vote on. Well, the other thing I just want to go back to is on November 14th at that select board meeting, um, when there was a keen push to make a decision about whether or not we were going to overlay these projects or not um, I mean just in, in a, the five minute overview was by accelerating the projects in the manner that we agreed to the cost savings on the library project was going to be in the neighborhood of I believe seven thousand yep. dollars a week yep. was yep. floated out yep. Yep. Um, and in the spirit of that the suggestion was made that it would make sense for the 
library, I call it the library, but it's still part of the town, but yep. I mean that in order to get that unbelievable benefit to inert to the library building project, that the library um, had other resources yep. Yep. available and we don't have all the resources available. This is coming out of the money that we have allocated for our building. But our our feeling at the time, and I think it's not everyone's feeling, it was not a unanimous vote, but the majority are still in agreement that this is still in the best interest <coughs> of the town and in the best interest <coughs> of the library. So the predicament we're in right now, I think, unless David tells me correctly, is that in order for us to contract um, with the enter into an agreement for the rent, we have to know that we have the funds available to be able to make those payments. So um, do you not, do you disagree that you have the 55 is the question? Oh, I think we, we could, I mean, again, I'm just seeing this for the first time. I mean, it certainly makes sense to me, oil, electric, sewer, right. water, of course, right. that those would come up. Right. Yeah. So it would yes. be a net differential. Right. And that's um, what I was just that's looking to come to. What is the net difference? Right, I, but it's just the the half is throwing me a little bit because you're saving three hundred sixty-four thousand dollars with starting a project early. So we're saving as a town. Oh, right. Your, your, we your are. project budget is, right. is saving. Right, right. But but again, I just want to go to the predicament that we're in mm -hmm. because on November fourteenth, it sounded like everybody was singing "Kumbaya," and it was like, "Don't worry about it. We're going to get so much benefit from the library side that we're <coughs> shipping whatever we have to, so, uh, whatever we have to, to make this happen." And I think, as a board, we we ran with that and have put in a significant effort to making that happen. And in the and in the absence of having more resources available from the library. I, we, we don't have the money right now to enter into this contract with the church, so we'd have to figure that out. We can delay this. Um, and, and But we're not and asking them to pay for the renovations or anything like that. We're, you know, we just want <coughs> so what you're, to honor So you're asking us move. to pay more than the... So than you're asking us to pay the difference. So you're asking us to say, okay, the actual cost is not 67. The actual cost is 72 because we have these taxes. Right. And then mm -hmm. you're saying, we would like to say, we still have to pay an additional, and I don't know, someone will tell me whether it's 14,000 or 16,000. Um, we also have to pay that. So our total cost is 72 plus whatever, 16. Um, I'll, I'll just pick the higher number. 72 plus 16, so now we're what? Up at 80, 88? 88. And we, 88 and the town had 55, so we're asking you library to pay 33. Okay, but then is we, that we're also moving twice, remember? So we have costs that we are incurring. We wouldn't be moving twice if we weren't accelerating the library project. So I, I'm, offering, I'm offering the suggestion that if you are going to ask the library to reimburse for a second move, uh, that certainly no, no, something. No, no, that, no, that, that's not, that, that, the, our move, one move into the new senior center is included in our costs yep. Yep. Uh, as the senior, speaking right, of the right, senior center. Right, but you're going to have to have a second cost of moving. So yes. we're correct. Now, so, now, if, yes. so if you one would move. like to request that the library subsidize that at the time that the second move comes when we have actual figures and we know more about our budget, I welcome you to, to toss that out there. Um, and I'm not saying that that's something we would or would not vote for. I cannot, we, we did not vote on that tonight. That was not part of the discussion. It is not something we have figures on that we could have voted on. Um, so uh, I think that for the moment that's an irrelevant um, topic, um, but I'm not saying it's going to be irrelevant in the future. Um, I, I do know that it, it was not an easy sell, um, that some folks were uh, a little dismayed at the cost of the rent and felt as if it was a little high and, and maybe there could have been additional negotiations. I don't know, I'm not privy to that. I have, I, as I said to them, I don't have that information. The only information I have is this is the lease. I have no idea what went into getting that lease. Um, and all I have is this operating budget. So uh, I was asked as the numbers person on the trustees to come up with what, <laughs> You know, what are some possible scenarios? And this was the scenario that they voted for. Um, so, uh, but we also agreed that 
you know, this is the first time we're all discussing this, so you were perfectly willing to come right. back and say, hey, we don't like that, this is what we would like, and we we're perfectly happy to vote on something else. It, you know, I can't make you any promises, um, but we are, we have authorized this, you know, this amount. Right, we didn't have, you have to understand, we were given this like last week, and we had to like figure out what to do and what to offer. We, we so had, this was our best effort. We had just effort. gotten it last right. yeah, no, no, we're not mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just we, saying yeah. we had to put yeah. our best effort to figure, yeah. to number crunch and come up with an answer. Mm -hmm. So we just put our number cruncher on it and came up with an answer. That doesn't mean we're not willing to talk about it. We're not trying yeah. to hardline anyone. We just needed to do math. A lot of the trustees or some of the trustees felt there wasn't a lot of information, right? Were they you know, aware yeah. of the November 14th discussion? Because we talked about it as a building committee. Some were and some were not. And we and have so had a turnover in our trustee group. So, okay. not so I think that's so the we were paying problem. something, yep. right? We, we all agreed, agreed we were, we were paying, paying something. something. All of us that were amongst the trustees at the time said yes. I don't think anyone is opposed to paying no. something. It's so that we had to come up with a number to bring to you tonight, right? So we had to figure out how to figure out that number, right? Like the issue is we're going to need to come up with something more along the lines of fifty or sixty thousand dollars in order to do this because we're incurring an additional hundred thousand dollars of costs in order to accelerate the project by roughly a year. By doing so, obviously there is a benefit to the town, to the taxpayers, and to the library as well, yeah. and a three hundred sixty-four thousand dollars savings. So. From my perspective, it should be easy to come up with fifty thousand dollars out of your project budget if you're saving three hundred sixty-four. Like what, so what we were pitched. Uh, I'm curious how you came up to a hundred thousand already. So that's that's I, that's where. So we are like responsible so for our I'll money go, too. I'll go through the lines right here. So we have between rent and taxes, we're about seventy-three thousand dollars. Add another five because we have about thirteen months of rent we're going to have to pay. It's right. about thirteen month projects. Okay, so we'll make so, it seventy. Yeah. Um, $15,000 roughly for renovations to town hall because of the fact that we're accelerating in those those organizations those uh, but they're all. moving here anyway we not permanently. We have to remodel but not, yeah. yeah they're moving here permanently I mean the, the planning board's moving here permanently right so uh, can no. I just uh, no. interrupt so I think no. that so we didn't know any of these additional costs and so I don't think we can actually even weigh in those tonight um, so what we had agreed upon, the current trustees in November, when all of this is being discussed, that yes, we would like to try to offset the additional costs of housing in wherever it was. It turns out to be Most Holy Redeemers, the one who's presented us with the lease. So that is all that we had discussed at the time or discussed this evening. So this is the first any of us have heard about renovations to town hall. Um, so I. I if you want to throw that in and now ask the library to pay for renovations to town hall, I'm happy to say sure at our next meeting that we can find a schedule. It we'll we'll discuss it. David, but yeah. wait, wait, I think there should be a separate budget for your town hall reno renovations. Okay, well, so then it's yeah. not part of this discussion, right. right? So I mean, the only thing that I've heard that's new that I think is yes, and I think. W we could probably agree to just adjust on the fly about this, but I again I don't speak for everyone. I the five thousand dollar cost that you've mentioned is not something we knew, but that's a real cost to the town that we have to incur that we wouldn't incur and it is, falls within what we had agreed to say, hey, let's let's help out with this. Um, and we also understand <coughs> that this is a one year lease, so we also understand that the the town may be coming back after the one-year lease and saying okay we actually need two more months or three more months can you pitch in with us we also understand that and we're happy to discuss that then we also understand that this is two moves and there may be additional moving costs and we're happy to discuss <coughs> that then but what's on the table right now is this lease the 60 what we were given which was 67,000 which I'm now hearing is really 52,000 and how how can we contribute to that but I think what's being missed is that all of these costs are being incurred as a result of accelerating the library project and only because of our accelerating the library yeah. project. So uh, we need the library to chip in more to offset those yeah. costs. And you guys are, like I said, what we were told is $7,000 a week. So you will be saving $364,000 
based on your, your what you told us. So that it shouldn't be an issue to come up with money to offset those costs we are incurring we, as we, a town. Let me, let me just clarify the, the way the, the process here. We received the rental agreement from David last week. I passed that to the trustees. That was all of the information mm -hmm. that we had. That was what the discussion was based on. Mm -hmm. If there are other costs, and that's why we're trying to what meet as that? departments, right. but we need information and the trustees need to vote with information. And I totally agree with you, Patrick, and I, and I think clearly we need to <clears throat> have dueling spreadsheets or whatever we want to have and have a line item detail and then we could sure. argue the particulars. But that said, where, where I'm taken aback a little bit and I'm, I'm on the committee is and we're going to offer you half. I, I mean, th that sort of language and I understand that you've had, that I'm understanding better now that you're explaining that there's been turnover with the trustees. There's going to be another one in April, so. Yeah, and, and it was this whole thing with, with the parish center and people <coughs> questioning that. I mean, we talked about moving to the mall. We talked about going to, this was, I don't think this literally. The surprise was that it was going to the mall to Holy Redeemer. I think the price tag was a little bit of a surprise. Which is yeah. significantly so. below market, by the way, which, which people will hear, but. I'm just reporting. But uh, I understand. And so I think maybe, um, you know, it's always difficult when we go back to our respective committees and everybody's not, in the, and you know, we, I'm a big fan of being in the same room at the same time, so maybe we can do some number crunching. I would personally suggest we have a joint meeting with the library trustees so we're not getting people peeled off getting misinformation. Really us. Right, and that would be fine with us, and it is not a library billing committee decision, so when you say you're on the committee, these no, discussions, I just meant, yeah. in the in the... Yeah, these because discussions have not committee. happened there. They've yeah. had, because the trustees are the ones who have signed the grant, so they're the re ones responsible right. for it. Okay, for so this. clearly this is not going to get resolved tonight. Um, so I think this side should crunch two numbers. Mm -hmm. You should crunch two numbers and come back at the February Well, I think we need meeting. to give them something I, to yeah, look yeah, at. We, we need, need to, to work together. Yes. Yes. Like, I feel yes. like some of the trustees felt that they didn't have enough information or <clears throat> weren't like didn't feel I mean we were literally I know you got it a week ago but same happened to us right yeah and we had to just fly with that and it's as you know as a board it's really hard because you cannot deliberate outside of open meeting and so we just met a half an hour ago to try and put this together we're not trying to shut the door we're not trying to, to <coughs> stop something we just need more information no I mean because ultimately need what that. could happen is we may have to go back before we start incurring all this other expense when we don't have the yeah, funding we I may have to go back to the original plan yeah right. because so, I yeah mean, I understand there's been turnover that's the but risk. we acted on I guess the old trustees but wishes we, uh, but uh, we yeah, right and our trustees wishes right. were to help right. no right. number was ever discussed right and, and you so decided that this was incremental the plan cost the was the language used in the November 14th meeting so for the house said of seniors the incremental uh, yeah. incremental yeah. cost of moving the seniors right exactly that's just why it's very fair to yeah. back out these other yeah right that so that's what yeah. we did we thought we did so let's <coughs> let's get the full picture and go back i mean do you tell me when you need us to get together and when you need a decision by and let's figure it out and let's really? do it so what is the what is the signing time? What do we need to do? When do we Tell need? me. February fourth is when this expires. Our lease. Okay. Agreement. I'm so sure we can get an. We extension. could probably get an extension. Yeah. But sooner rather than later, yeah. we have mm -hmm. a. So I would like to be able to sign point. that at our February sixth meeting. Um, I have that on the agenda so that I would like people to have a conversation about what we, what we need to do to crunch the numbers. Um, and come to a conclusion before the next meeting. Can we just agree amongst us on the board here what we think should be included? Yeah. Because, like, for mm -hmm. me, I might not, Thank I you. might say that town hall modifications, <coughs> it's tricky because we don't have the money right now. We have some allocated, but we might not have enough, and we might not be able to do it in time um, if it's not included in your budget. So, you know, we could go to town meeting and ask for money, but that's going to be in May, and then we might not get that money for a few months. I'm not so exactly sure what and why so many modifications have to be made 
to and this building anyway. And I don't think we have exact numbers yet, mm -hmm. right? right? No. Well, Gary's so, working on that, and there's not nearly as many as we had talked about originally. Yeah. We're basically talking about mm -hmm. two walls being moved. Right. And a safe coming out or something like that, right? So mm -hmm. it's not crazy, but and and again to their to their point, yeah. So I don't mean they, but to the the people <laughs> the representing the library tonight, yeah. the point that's been made is if it's something that we would have done anyway, then of course we shouldn't be trying to pass that cost along. Sure. So Which if it would have been needed with the, the senior center moving, moving out anyway, and the hooker school then those should be off point. the table. Yeah. What right. was the wider for Hadley Media to move into the library upstairs, there's uh, not enough that power was wired. Okay, upstairs. I thought you said wiring over at Holy Redeemer. Oh, no, no. Okay. no um, but they need yeah. to get the phones and everything the hooked up over there. Moved, yeah, that's what the internet okay. and the I thought it was a line item for Holy Redeemer rent renovations over there that uh, you had mentioned. I think so. So, and, yeah. and so maybe we can get numbers together for approximately how much the move is going to cost, right. yeah, approximately how much it is to move the telephone and internet. I mean, they always nail you on that kind of stuff, and yeah. uh. You know, and we have the costs the rent. for the rent and the mm -hmm. taxes. I don't think there's much else, is, is there? No. I think I mean, it's pretty, pretty much those it. four or five things. Yeah. The impact of the water and sewer, if we're paying $900 a year, roughly, in the uh, Hooker School, uh, are they, do they realize what they're going to incur over there with the rent? Will that be? That should be part of the rent. Just part it's of the rent. It's part of the utilities. It's part of the rent. Yeah, that's not. Okay. Above and beyond. And we don't have to pay any impact any fees, right? No. But, but we don't have to pay impact no. fees, right? No. Yeah. No. You can waive that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and security that's deposits waived. That was going to so. be my next statement. So, so yeah, I think that yeah. you have the whole list. Yes. So if we could have a formal list of that would really help. what. We could have you a better conversation. Outside. Then we could actually have yeah. a discussion yeah. about what it is we're And paying maybe we for. can highlight on here what we think is justifiable. As transferable cost mm -hmm. and what they still need to pay, you know. Right. Yeah, and that's what I and tried to do. do that but I do have a couple yeah. question marks that I didn't know, so I just said, "Oh, we're probably responsible. The town is probably responsible for it." So yeah. it was two thousand dollars difference. So, so between the end of this week and the beginning of next week, we could get you those hard facts, and then you could and we'll make get sure back to us the uh, answer. You want <coughs> uh, you want a number on the sixth? You're saying yes, right? Please. Mm -hmm. So we so will we'll have, make sure to have. A we will meet before, before the sixth, and if you're going to get us the information on the twenty eighth or the 29th ninth, you're saying, yeah. which would be next mm -hmm. Monday or Tuesday. So the trustees will meet somewhere between the thirtieth and the fourth to do the, it. Does yeah, that it'll make sense? I just want to make sure we get you yeah. what you need. It'll yeah. be the 29th, most likely, if I can't get the information by the end of this week. You the twenty ninth. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll arrange to meet. We'll, we'll discuss and meet the thirtieth to the um, somewhere between the thirtieth and the sixth, and then get you a number. We appreciate the clarification. No, we absolutely. really are not trying to be difficult. We were just given a task and didn't. I just want to work work together and trying to get all our folks on board with something that is palatable yeah. to everybody on the. Country. And remember, it all comes out of the town. You guys exactly. have an allocated budget. You have those funds accessible for this. We don't have those funds accessible for us right now. So without going to town meetings. Without without going to town town meetings. meetings. Right. So we're talking about delaying right. but this, But you clearly have the, the money that you saved, the 55000 That's very clear, right? The money, whatever that number turns out Agreed. to be, 41 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. 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 Right. So we yeah. did have a question about that, actually. Mm -hmm. So that is something that we did not have time to follow up with <clears> the treasurer on because we just had the conversation tonight. But we do want to make sure that, yes, we are. We know that we cannot give grant money that comes yeah. from the MBLC. Right. We know that we cannot give any money that we fundraise. <laughs> For this but we do have money that town meeting authorized towards the library so we do want to do our due diligence and check with the treasurer that we actually can use that to to pay for the rent so we thought it would probably be fine if we just did a sort of you know a transfer a departmental transfer yeah, um, rather exactly rather that's than what we writing a check yeah. to the most holy that's redeemer we which we think oh, is yeah. probably not yeah, yeah. 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 you know yeah. so we so we did want to clarify that that so no matter how much it is, if it's one dollar or if it's fifty thousand dollars, we'd still want that clarification because sure. we don't want to be in any violation of our own uh, management of money. Okay. So, all right, sounds good. And and the, will the town treasurer be at the next meeting, or should we just? She is. On? She's coming. Oh, that's right. She's <laughs> coming for something else. Yeah, yeah. she's watching she's right now. Yeah. 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 She's texting. So we'll be John. calling you. Yeah. <laughs> So we should be all set for okay. that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And 
sub fire station. We uh, submitted our plans to the planning board last week um, just for a pre preliminary review. Uh, we have a meeting on February 15th, I believe. <coughs> That's a Wednesday. No. Nope. Thirteenth. No, well, we're not going on a Friday, so okay. it'll be the twelfth or the night. Yeah, twelfth or the nineteenth in February. <laughs> we will be submitting the, the plans uh, for review. So we're moving along on that also. Grease trap. Grease trap. Yes, there was a issue on our grease trap. We would like to waive that issue. We've talked to. Mr. Okafor on that, about the sub-fire station. Uh, all we have in there is a, basically a, a house stove, a house refrigerator, and a house sink. So there's nothing in there that's commercial at all. So we don't feel that we need to have a uh, grease trap um, inside or outside for that building. Madam Chair, uh, uh, based on what we have right now, it's a good idea if we can accommodate with him, but my concern after reviewing is that uh, because it's a public building, somewhere along the line do the fire department, in the case of expansion or some other emergencies, all of a sudden they keep the stove changes to some bigger um, structure. Um, I don't know if that is on the pipeline. so. At that point, it becomes an issue with uh, the grease train. Mm -hmm. So, not knowing that part of the of the equation, uh, it's one of the I don't know if the board is can give us that answer because based on what it is there right now, we can give a waiver and it, I think it will benefit the town. But if we have to go the next step where, and then it becomes a problem where we have to come before the town that we we need the grease trap. So that's why I, I don't know the long-term plan for that location. Do you know what's the incremental cost yeah. of? Otherwise, it's better to. It was quite a bit. It was more. about fifteen thousand. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Plus the maintenance. Of but it's fifteen thousand yeah. right now to install it. Mm -hmm. Later on down the line, it'll yeah. probably be about twenty-five. Which is not more. in our budget right yeah. now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, the problem that you're going to occur here is the motel you just put in at Home Depot. Complex mm -hmm. um, have the individual kitchen units and all the motel rooms, mm -hmm. and we ended up putting the external grease traps in over there because there was so many internal uh, units. In the past five years, we have done a good job with getting grease out of the main lines because we're a low flow uh, sewer department. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're running only half a million gallons a day, not. Five million gallons a day to flush this grease through and, and move it along down the line. Well, so right now we, I mean, and I don't see in the future. They never <coughs> did with the other fire station up there. Um, I don't think there was a grease trap up there, and they didn't use the kitchen up there as a commercial kitchen. So it's not like we'd be using it for like a no. warming facility or anything uh, like that. No. Yeah. That's you know, and that's the kind of thing I think and you're talking yes, about. Yes. Yes. That's, so okay. that's what we're looking at. We're not going to use it as, as that. It's just going to be a station to go and get the trucks out of there and, okay. and move. It's not going to be used for, I mean, we have a main fire station here in the center, center yes. fire station, and that's where all the functions and everything take place. So. The dam will be expanded someday, but right. yeah. <coughs> but they also have a pump station, so that grease trap's cleaned. Mm -hmm. The Frequently. pump station's cleaned once a year now in the fall time. Mm -hmm. After the issues we had over there, mm -hmm. with this, they've got the same situation: the sand, gravel uh, separator, mm -hmm. oil separator for the bay side, and they do have a small kitchen. Actually, two kitchenettes in there. Um, but it goes into a holding tank before it's pumped into the sewer system. So all that grease gets a chance to cool in the pump station and gets cleaned out mm -hmm. by the town once a year. You're not doing that up there in North Adley. No. If you were to pump it, then you would have well, at least a containment. The amount of the time that the building is actually going to get used, they're probably going to have to go in there and run the water in there just to make sure that you're keeping open the pipes going. Uh, uh, for the amount of time of going in and getting a truck and going out, it's not going to be used for anything major. So yeah. I, I have been asked to ask for us to waive the the uh, 
traps and anyway, that's that's where I'm coming from. And is there an oil separator on the other on the base side? They're they're putting a yes. They're putting one that's in the so that's good. Okay. Yeah, the base yeah. side has it was law back when we built this station. Correct. So, okay. Okay. So they had did that. They had done mm -hmm. that part, but mm -hmm. um, they also put the pump station in to pump it across to the elementary school to Middle Street. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, there's a secondary containment there at the time before we had the sewer regulations with the grease traps. Mm -hmm. Now we have the sewer regulations with the grease traps. And I, I'm telling you, when, when the public finds out that we just waived this for our own building, uh, we're going to get a lot of complaints. I already see it But happen. we don't have a commercial kitchen. We don't have a commercial stove. I mean, it, it's Neither really does a motel that we just may put one in, Joyce. Yeah, this is what I'm have, trying to tell but you. But there's a big difference with the unit. It's a multi-unit. It's not just one stove or one refrigerator and one kitchen size sink. I mean, otherwise know. we'd be doing it on every house. That yeah, when we make a house yeah. to it. Yeah, you'd have to do a house to do it. So our that's our, that's our prerogative. Yeah. So that's what I'm asking. Just stay so do you facts. want us to make a motion? Yes, please. Oh, okay. Um, I'll make a motion that we respectfully request our DPW um, Waive the grease trap requirement, or actually it's not a requirement, waive, waive the necessity of a grease trap for the substation in North Avenue. Second. And further discussion. And this, this request came from the planning board? Is that where it came no, from no, initially? Or this was from the DPW it came from? Okay. No, no, it came from the, our committee. The committee. The committee. The committee for the cost. Okay. And the need. Okay, just wondering where it came from. Right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Four to oh, one. That was four one. zero abstention. Okay. There was the other, other. planning board question about it. Okay. Um, Excuse me, are you going to go back to the tobacco barn? That's what I'm here for. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah. can go back to the tobacco barn. Because no, no, unless I took a nap, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't see Wally, so. <laughs> <laughs> we could go. I'm Wally. Too. Yeah, you're Wally too. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have a tobacco barn, and uh, we have a an agreement with uh, Mr. Sikowski, uh on the use of that, and evidently you have an issue, Mr. Sikowski. Um you're saying that you put some poles in the barn, and when did you put those in? I'm not familiar with that issue. I, I think I better speak to that since he's not here, because you're not Wally. <laughs> I don't, I'm, no, I'm representing Wally, but I don't know anything so about poles. That Wally came to me and made his final payment on the agreement, mm -hmm. and then asked what the select board's plans were for the tobacco barn. And he stated to me that um, he would like to continue to store stuff in it. If you're not going to tear it down, he'd like to rent it again. Um, and then he, I said I did not know that I would, of course, bring it to the select board because it's your property, your decision. And he said if you're not going to let him use it again, please let him know so he can remove his stuff. But he also said that he put the poles in the barn. They belong to him, and he would like to remove them. And we also have bins stored. He, he, it's, he, it's full of uh, harvest bins. Right. He meant, he didn't mention everything. He did say that there were things stored in it. He mentioned the poles specifically, and so that's what he asked me to bring in to talk to to put on the agenda. Um, and then he wanted to talk to y'all about uh, if you're going to tear the barn down, to to bring it to your attention, the possibility of selling the barn wood as a possible source of income for the dismantling of the barn wood. He said that there's a market for it and he would hate for the town to miss the opportunity. Is that what you have? Uh, well, actually, a little more than that. There you uh, go. And Wally would have been here tonight, except he and Mary went to Boston for the arrival of their first granddaughters. Oh. 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 And, and little Charlotte was born about noon time. Oh. Congratulations. It's a great day. Beautiful. Uh, and you know, anyway, Wally could, has Could you just been identify making, yourself? I'm sorry. Could you identify yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm Cecil Curry, and, and I'm Wally's next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. I live at 137, the farm is 135. Okay. And uh, so I, I help Wally when I'm not vacationing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But anyway, Wally has been renting the barn for a number of years and would like to continue to do so as long as the barn is, can be available. And he's willing to continue to pay for it. And all of his, anybody working there will be ins insured. He, wanted, he thought that might be an issue that you would be concerned about. And it is presently full of uh, bins and uh, we would be taking those out along about July for the harvest time. And then we would hopefully fill it with tobacco at about the same time. And uh, I mean, to, well, that's where you would cure the tobacco. So that, that's the poles that you're talking about, is that to hang the tobacco on those poles? Is that what yes, okay. and, and while he made everything he rents, he maintains. Right. And he would continue to do that. So uh, some of his stuff is there. Uh, including all of his bins, which are thousands of dollars worth of bins in there. Of course, we're going to be breaking ground on the sub-fire station, hopefully this summer. Um, so I'm not sure with, with the building of the project and use of land around it, I know that we're only going to be using about two acres um, of that property, but of course you're going to have to have piles and things moved and things of that nature, so I'm not exactly sure about the rental of the land for farming. Well, he, he's not talking about the land, he's talking about the barn. The barn the itself, thing. so yeah. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with them using the barn. Yeah, I just don't keep it in use, um, you know, yeah. if you can. Right. Especially if he's going to maintain it. Yeah. Does anybody have a problem with him just using the barn for now? Uh, he, he, she, uh, Jane asked a question, he's, he's presently paying 1200 a year to rent the barn. Mm -hmm. I make a motion that we continue um, to offer the barn for lease. Uh, unless we find it would interfere with our project, our construction project. Mm -hmm. From what we understood, the project would be on the other side of the field right. rather than That's at the barn. Yeah, it's and just a matter of maneuvering yeah. trucks and, and dirt. And, and it's everything. important because he has to now buy seed to plant the tobacco plants to get ready sure. for mm -hmm. the fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, it, if, if, if you can tonight, assure him that he could still use it, that'd be great. I don't see a problem. I did not run it past the <coughs> sub fire station committee, but I don't think there's anything that we actually would be using the barn for. Do you want to like just call Phil Colombo tomorrow or something and ask him? I could. I'll yeah. do that tomorrow. So I'll second the motion, just friendly amendment subject to Joyce sure. follow up with the OPM. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. And we'll work we'll amendment. work out a release agreement. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay, okay we'll get in touch with him. Good. Are you okay? Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Sorry, sorry for uh, not picking up on you quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I put Plainville form, but I didn't put Wally Sikowski. So <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's an Oski regarding Sikowski. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Thank, thank you, you so much. Trish. Thank you. Vote, right? Go, favor? please. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, it will be pleased. He's, he's already pleased enough to be with the audience. Well, yeah, 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 Give him one more. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm going to have to drop something. Well, raising the rental. You to drop something? Yeah. Oh, i got to drop something off the wall. Oh, nice. I do a lot for him. I read them. Okay. Let's um, do sewer and water rates uh, while Chris is here. So there's a little bit of history here is that, uh, <laughs> that the, the town received a sanitary survey report from the Department of Environmental Protection for the water system. One of the conditions of the water sanitary survey is that the water rates should be adjusted to reflect the capital plan. Uh, and and uh, so Marlowe back in May presented information about water and sewer rates uh, that indicated that we were behind in both um, enterprise funds in terms of not only attending to our operations but also planning for the future capital upgrades that were necessary for the regular maintenance of the system as well as for special projects such as Route 9 expansion and the Bay Road uh, bridge uh, uh, replacement. Uh, so at the time we, uh, we voted to increase rates for both water and sewer, um, recognizing that we would have to revisit this issue again. In your uh, board docs documents, I've provided long range trend analyses for both water and sewer. Water on, on the surface looks like it's fine, but we still haven't uh, prepared for the 
capital costs that we know that are coming with Route 9, mm -hmm. uh, as well as other replacement projects, particularly in the Rocky Hill Road area. Uh, for sewer, sewer, the financial condition uh, is not good. You know, almost every indices that we have, we see a warning trend, both in terms of s operating surplus or deficit, revenue shortfalls or surpluses, sewer fund operating position, sewer prize enterprise fund balances, all of these show declines. Expenditures by function, our expenditures have been relatively stable, not moving much more than a couple of percentage points over a five-year period. So we have declining revenue, declining fund balances, steady expenses, not counting the capital expenses that are coming. Our sewer debt service is in still below our optimal level, so there's theoretically room to add more debt but we need to do something about revenue for sewer. So with that, I'll just turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for giving that history. Uh, Madam Chair, I, su I submitted uh, two, two graphics uh, using the 50% and also 0%. For the few for the few weeks, few weeks I've been here, I've looked at this issue. As uh, the town administrator said, we have projects that are lined up, and we feel that the select board should uh, give us an approval, especially with the rate charges, in order to continue, especially in the sewer, a long-term recovery from deficit. And looking at that 15 percent that was said um, in my view with that 15 percent I think with three four years down the line looking at the graphics um, sewer will be able to come to a point where uh, the board may take a look at that 15 percent again but if we decide to do nothing um, we will m m the, the few a result, positive result of accrued, uh, we'll be losing that and also cost is increasing. Uh, we also have um, issues with the plant, um, repair, maintenance, and because of some of the equipment we have, they are very costly to, to, to repair. We had um, an issue recently before my time that was that happened in October where the state showed up <coughs> and they cited the plant and required us to do some safety fixes, which we are working on right now. And uh, some of those simple, as simple as uh, getting uh, some metal guardrails, or even depending on the type of location, they are not they're expensive. And so when we look at the sewer, at this point, if we have any major failure, uh, it's we don't have anything there which will give us a buffer. The water, we have some numbers, but the water has projects well that line up that we eventually, whatever we have right now, will be depleted. We have uh, issues of root nine. We have issues of uh, cleaning of wells. We also have um, the two wells, the two water tanks that one we're using right now, one is absolute water using it. But DEP wants us to do something towards that. Matter. So we believe that if the board can allow us some to increase some of the charges uh, in the next in this fiscal year and maybe subsequent ones, we will be in a good shape to at least meet any challenges that may show up. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, it will be it will be running a um, a plant with high risk. We also believe that uh, in terms of what we are and in terms of manpower, the cost has been relatively flat. So we have, we, we, there's no increase and also we have uh, um, no loss among the 
So we have good staff. They should, they're coming in, they do the, the right thing, they're taking out the trainings. And so that also helps us to keep the maintenance of these infrastructures healthy. So my request on behalf of the department is that the board should consider um, allowing us to go with the new charges. I know that we talked about increasing the water and sewer rates, and I appreciate your comments and everything that you've given us tonight. But don't we have to have a public hearing on increasing water rates? Yep. Correct? Yeah, and yeah. just went up 15%. And I know <coughs> I've spoke with over 30 people on fixed incomes that can't afford the rate you got right now. I know. And I just brought it up at the last meeting. We're not directing our money in the proper ways. We're robbing Peter to pay Paul, and that's what's going on with the budgets. The numbers are there. They're not lying. How are we robbing Peter to pay Paul with sewer and water? We haven't raised our tax in that. You're there taking for years. the water and sewer fees and offsetting the highway department. Look at the numbers over the last 10 years since you created the DPW. Wait, so just looked at them. I think we created this problem. I said it at the last meeting. No. Look. I've got all the budgets for the last six years, so and you I can see to, what happened with the money, with the line items. I have to dispute that a little bit, because I've gone back and taken a look at Mike Klamowski's budgets before we had a unified TPW, and there was always cost sharings between water and highway. Small uh, percentages. Yeah. Very small percentages. And so there aren't that, so looking at the DPW uh, unified budget where it was cost sharing between highway water and sewer, uh, I'm just not seeing an outlandish subsidy from one division to another. It's, it's, uh, it all seems very reasonable the way that the costs are apportioned out. Can I, can I just ask if we can maybe look at doing some things, some of these big capital projects with water and sewer, can we look at paying those out of our normal tax base instead of the enterprise fund. Put There's on, always that issue. Put them on an annual town meeting and fund it through. At least maybe a couple yes. of projects. I just do feel yes. like these are going up a lot and we are in trouble and yes. can we get it from some other sources as opposed to just raising the rates constantly? Yeah, with voter, I, I don't know. voter approval, you can do that. You can offset your capital. I think but the only thing we gotta keep in mind is we have only 20% um, of the population of the town on sewer so yes some of those uh, projects such as on route 9 benefit everybody yeah but and, I think so. it, that's and that's where I'm kind of coming from right that's, yeah. that's the point I was trying to make at the last meeting but in other areas you know not necessarily so yeah that's, that's one of the, the, the tough things to sell to the and, members. and so yeah that's what I'm wondering can we kind of cherry pick a couple of yeah. projects where maybe these are more beneficial for the entire town and we could right. justify them right. under that tax you know, or capital exactly. project. Right. And I said before, yeah. you know, I said before that the Route 9 uh, improvement should come out of taxation, not out of water, because it's part of the distri distribution line between the pump stations and the tanks, mm -hmm. and, and it's a major improvement for the whole town. Mm -hmm. It's still not going to help me at my house because I got direct chlorine injection. You know, it comes right from the pump stations and it goes right down the main, down East Street. So well, thanks. It my eyes are water. Space. My <laughs> eyes are watering in the morning. Sometimes. You have to put a filter on your water going into your house. Like I, I do. Have. I, have I just a, got. I have a house filter and I don't have chlorine in my water. That's fine. Is that something? Chris, that you could take a look at, take a look at the capital yes. plan, yes. and maybe make some recommendations on how we might maneuver that before we, we jump to the... Yeah, yeah. And But then we, we need to keep the conversation going. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying let's not do this right now, but it's 15% last year, 15% this year, 15% next year. It's like, it keeps ratcheting up, and yeah, I, I, people yeah. are on fixed income, so what do we yeah. do? I think the, how much did we raise water by that? Was it 15% last year? Five. Five? Mm -hmm. Five and 15. Yeah, I just, uh, I know we have, we have to catch up because we didn't touch it for 10 years. Yeah, but yeah. But the sewer's three times the water. To be making these jumps mm -hmm. every single year yeah, when we've got all tough. these other projects, uh, I think is yeah. tough to mm -hmm. sell to people. Swallow this year. So, yeah. do a little 
investigation and uh, yes. come back to us. And so just just a timing issue is that uh, we need to be sending out the bills on uh, February 8th. So if we could have the We're hearing. not going to have an increase by then. You're not going to have one by then. No, so mm -hmm. wouldn't even be able to I don't get it in the system. I think we hold off until at least the next uh, quarterly building billing mm -hmm. period. That's the good news is we're doing the quarterly now. So right. Yeah. And it's going to happen in February. All right. Well, because we legally have to have the hearing, right? We do. Right. Yeah. You have the you have the hearing. You set the rate. Because uh, the next hearing would be the sixth. If yeah, February sixth. Right? Six. And I don't think she'd get the bills out in two days so no. after. No. So we'll plan it for the next quarter. Mm -hmm. Give us a little time. We'll give Chris a little time to yeah. look and see what we can actually do. So it's not for such a bill. large increase for for people if we were going to do it that way, or mm -hmm. how we can redirect uh, or take something to town meeting to pay for some of these other projects too. So uh, we'll look at that for the next quarter. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Sounds good. All right. Yeah. Yes. Any other questions, Chris, tonight? Everything going okay? Yes. Yes? Good. You surviving? So uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Me and him haven't taken a ride yet, so oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. let us know we'll follow you. Christopher Drive. <laughs> yeah, you better drive this. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very thank much. much. Thanks. All right. So now where are we? What else did I skip over? You want to trade show. Trade show. You want to talk about some of that tonight? What we went and saw, <coughs> did, listen to. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Want to go through anything? Who wants to start? Well, the stuff we did together was we saw. Uh, we listened to the governor, right? Mm -hmm. Governor and um, the, the lieutenant governor, governor. Karen yeah. Plato. Yeah. That was a fairly positive presentation, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, they have their big, um, the housing choice <coughs> bill I have that they mm -hmm. were talking about. And then the big one they talked about was climate change. Mm -hmm. Yep. Trying to address that. So and funding that through a special property transfer tax. I was thinking the dike when they were talking about oh, that. Oh, yeah, that so was too. see if we can get anything mm -hmm. for that. And then from there we went to the, um, we also heard uh, the two senators, Elizabeth Warren and uh, Joyce's favorite, Markey. Senator Markey, mm -hmm. a personal friend, and then Mayor Monty Walsh. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and that was a more of a, it was interesting, so it was, those conversations were definitely more <coughs> kind of global. Political. Yeah, political, political and uh, global conversations, talking about the gridlock in Washington and, you know, kind of what you'd expect. And even Marty Walsh's speech was about cut it out, uh -huh. um, that it wasn't helping anybody. Mm -hmm. And then we all did a series of workshops, too. Uh -huh. Yeah. That you want to talk about? What do you guys want to? I went to an opiate one. Uh, a physician from Greenfield talked about opiates and uh, health care and that issue and what's being offered now. Um, I have a couple of books I'll bring in for people. I think David had brought one in. Uh, mm -hmm. David Chase was... Uh, one of the speakers, American Dream. Uh, then I went to Quizify, and that was put on by MIIA, and actually all town employees can um, go online and, and do it, and you can actually find out how medically knowledgeable you are um, for yourself and your family and, and what uh, people <coughs> take and uh, medication-wise and uh, it, it was quite interesting of, of what's available, and I, I, I would suggest that people just do it for fun to see uh, actually what... How much they actually know. Actually about know. About what they're taking. Yeah. Exactly. Two I greens, mean, two blues, two reds. Yeah, but actually, what's, it, what's <laughs> in Colgate toothpaste? Yeah. I mean, you would be surprised. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so I'll, a lot of those other things, but that was interesting. So those were my two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went to one on marijuana legislation and um, I, I would say more specifically from the uh, more executive level of the agreements between communities and establishments um, and you know it's kind of a little bit of a, I don't want, know what terminology to use but there's no good 
model at this point, or not that there isn't a good model, there is no standard model for, you know, how to take applicants that are looking at opening establishments, um, what kind of contract renewal you should have, um, <coughs> you know, if these additional payments people are getting uh, when an establishment comes into town and size the signs on, um, you know, if you have to make charitable donations or, um, you know, donate to a social justice cause or something like that, it's, it's not clear if that's legal. Um, there's no precedent right now. So there's a lot of questions. A lot of communities are trying to figure it out. But there are also a lot of communities that have plans in place and are good models to start with. Um, so when we're looking at that, you know, probably in the next year, possibly. Uh, I also went to one that was on secession planning, and um, that was really good. One key thing, you know, about secession planning is, you know, involving HR in that plan and what you need to do. And it's not just about um, people aging out of their positions, but also about what happens if somebody gets a sudden illness? How do you replace that person in a pinch? And how do you, how do you transfer that institutional knowledge um, um, t from one person to the next? And just a lot about documenting things, getting people's involvement in job descriptions and saying what they do, tips and tricks, and kind of having that documentation in place is, is really good. Um, that one went on for a while, so. Uh, that that was that was really good as well. Um, also, oh yeah, I have on here. Uh, you know, even uh, looking at other people to fill uh, roles in the community. So right now, like we just had a meeting today about um, a person that wants to work off a portion of their property taxes. Women in the community coming in and helping out with areas where we might be lacking knowledge or expertise or just time in doing something and uh, she's going to start working on uh, our, our capital plan and not necessarily the spreadsheet but a narrative of our capital plan and what mm -hmm. we're trying to do so trying to implement things like that in your community as well mm -hmm. um, I could keep going but you go ahead <laughs> <laughs> um, so speaking of human resources I went to the hashtag me too in town hall um, workshop and it was interesting, the emphasis there was very much on um, not rec recognizing that there's a fair amount of case law now that supports the fact that proper behavior and improper behavior inures not only to actual employees, but the boards and committees of the town. Um, so there were a lot of recommendations about um, actually adopting the code of conduct, which we've already done, but encouraging other uh, committees, especially elected officials, to have codes of conduct in place. Um, there's an attorney that does this every year. I mean, I've, I've gone to like this HR um, update in, in prior years, and she seems to be a go-to in the Commonwealth. And she has like the most horrific stories about situations gone bad. So. Um, it, I walked out of there feeling very thankful that we've been talking about hiring an HR manager. Mm -hmm. So I think it supports what we're trying to do here. Uh, and then the next topic or workshop I went to was hot topics in municipal law. And David was at this one with me as well. Um, I'm not going to bore everybody to tears by summarizing it, but it had a lot to do with you know recent um, changes with the medical marijuana, some tax exemptions for veterans, short-term rental, um, income issues. Uh, Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, and then some, you know, includes tips for what municipalities should be doing to either modify their existing policies or whatever to, to be in compliance with this. So um, I'm <coughs> going to take this uh, scan and just circulate it because I think yeah, everybody on the board wants to read yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. It'll yeah. be worth reading. <clears throat> I'd recommend that we also send uh, relevant portions to the different departments that are affected. So there's a, something in there for police. I, I actually there. did send that to him already. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. But yeah, so. Either we'll that or I'll make enough copy. Can we just scan that and get it to all the boards? Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. do. I'll scan it in and I'll send it out. And you're, that's a good idea. Maybe send it to like the chair of planning yeah. board and different ones. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then the other <coughs> thing that we did was um, there was also a panel discussion. I don't remember which. I've lost track now. But there was a panel discussion. A uh, hot topic had to do with school funding. So yeah, there was a that. lot of conversation across the Commonwealth about the proposed changes to the foundation formula. Um, and Sandy Pooler, who we've actually had, um, we've spoken with when he was our neighbor over in Amherst here. Um, he's now out in Arlington. He was one of the participants, a um, gentleman from DESE, uh, Department of Ed, and then a superintendent from Chelsea. And they talked about the different challenges um, that people are facing. and. It was a very resounding cry that the state, um, everybody's paying the price of the increased cost of special education, and that maybe working on the foundation formula in and of itself isn't the right way to go or, or the only way to go, and encouraging um, people at that level to maybe try to figure out a way to be more creative on helping municipalities deal with special ed costs. Yeah, and it seemed like the trend was everybody outside of 495, their school populations are going down, and everybody inside 495, their school populations oh, yeah. are going up. So mm -hmm. the state's kind of divided with how funding <coughs> needs to be modeled in a way because of those different directions. And our select board member from Waitley um, yeah. finally made a suggestion of uh, taking special ed out of the main budget and being funded differently than what it is right now so that you know, the school budgets aren't overwhelmed with special education, um, which yeah. seems to be Big more and more these days, uh, be having it funded differently, yeah. so, which was a, a great idea that we've all thought about, but, mm -hmm. you know, no legislation there um, to help that. And so we had two good days and got home before the snowstorm. Mm -hmm. That was good. Um, Just a couple of things. You all met with uh, the the select board members of Hampton, Hampshire, and Franklin County mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in order to talk about a reviving energy into the regional select board associations and trying to come up with a regional uh, approach to networking, brainstorming, spearheading special legislation. Uh, that, that was an exploratory conversation. I thought it might have legs. Yeah, well, we have didn't problem. have any legs because we couldn't hear what everybody was saying. It was kind of in a, a, a room where everybody yeah. else was talking, and we heard some of it, but I mean, it's, it's, again, it's uh, trying to bring people together and sharing ideas, sharing responsibilities, sharing things that we possibly could between towns, yeah. uh, regionalizing with some of our things that we have already, which is an ongoing conversation, I think, that we've had right along, um, what we can share. And also how we interact with our, uh, we have a whole new band of elected officials, so, or representatives, so, you know, with that turnover of the brain trust of our legislative delegation, we really need to find a way to make sure that, you know, we're, we're providing them with some common themes to help all of us so that they can run with it. Do you have anything on your town report you want to say? Yeah, so just a couple of other things. Going back to Governor Charlie Baker, uh, he did release his budget. Uh, we do have some preliminary local aid figures for Hadley. Uh, and the news is good. Uh, looks like for Chapter 70 education funding, uh, there's a 21%, uh, uh, almost 22% increase in funding uh, under his proposal. And for unrestricted general government aid, looks like there's a 2.6 percent increase, <coughs> uh, which amounts to about twelve thousand dollars and change. So, true to his word, he said he was going to distribute money to the cities and towns, and his and his initial budget sure reflects that. And uh, see if it gets past the legislature. Yeah. Well, many a slip betwixt cup and lip, yeah. and let the games begin. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it gives us a couple of uh, good numbers to start. Uh, a couple of things that haven't been touched upon is the Federal Communications Commission has made some recent rulings and orders that uh, affect the permitting and siting of cell telephone towers, which they're called small wireless facilities. This is going to be a big deal for all cities and towns because they've put things on a very complicated and fast track in terms of permitting. And as we roll out 5G, 
uh, more and more communities are going to be faced with this. In order to get ahead of this, I've talked to a Hampshire County, Hampshire College student who's willing to do a winter internship to help us put together some of the per permitting uh, policies and requirements for the town in place before we start seeing some applications. So, uh, and there's a number of other things that we need to look at in terms of FCC rulings. Uh, what else? Um, Department of Energy Resources, we had a long conversation, running conversation, having to do with green communities and being designated formally as a green community. Uh, this is going to require a lot of coordination of many town departments to achieve, uh, but if we do achieve it, there will be grant money available. So we're going to start with a presentation from our contacts. Yes, so you're going to have your local rep come and give you a presentation about the benefits of green community designation. <coughs> the costs, too, as well as the Does benefits. anybody have <laughs> contact with our new local rep? Or? Mm, Carrie? Yeah, Carrie. No. No, I've talked to him a few times. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Only at, like, um, bigger gatherings that I well, have. Well, he was at a few meetings said. here, and then we haven't seen him since he got elected, so. <laughs> you don't stop by. Yeah. <laughs> I got a number in my phone. I'll text him. <laughs> Come by and see there us. You go. Uh, When's your is, office does hours? He, yeah, does, is he going to have office hours he, at the senior center? I think center? he was planning on setting up some office okay. hours. Yeah. Are any of you planning on attending any of those listening sessions that our legislators have proposed? Have you seen that or heard of that? Yeah, yeah. I've been getting I don't have the dates. On, yeah. but I don't either. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to put them idea. in my calendar and see, I don't know if we want to talk about attending them or mm -hmm. some yep. of us attending them, mm -hmm. coming up with a list of things. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, and the other thing that was talked about at length was the short-term rental local tax. Um, and this has to do with people renting out their rooms under A or B and B's. Um, there are some revenue opportunities for the town. Uh, that we're going to explore. There may be a couple of articles on town meeting floor related to that. So mm -hmm. it was a good, um, good conference. Sometimes these are hit or miss. I thought this was a hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Very good. All right. Anything else? Um, covered everything I else. That's covered <laughs> everything else. Um, how about announcements? Okay. <coughs> one. So, uh, just wanted to remind everybody that we are looking for nominations for the annual report dedication and the Fred Oakley Award. I believe we've already had some suggestions come in, um, but if anybody has anyone that they would like to nominate for either one of those um, recognitions, please submit it to uh, Jennifer at the Select Board's office, or you can email info at hadleyma.org. I had, um, there was a ribbon cutting ceremony today at our new Pride store. I was not able to attend. Did anybody get to go? Yeah, police and fire represented the town. Police and fire. They have also, um, as part of our commitment to the towns in which we operate, Pride will donate five cents on every gasoline gallon purchased during our celebration week from Monday, January 21st through Saturday, January 26th to the new Hadley Goodwin Memorial uh, Library Fund. <coughs> and we did have a request from the Edward Hopkins Educational Foundation. Um, they have asked to generate funding for school projects at Hadley Elementary at Hopkins. We would like to know if it would be possible to procure clothing hooks and a number of bricks from Hooker School Building so that we could sell them as memento of Hooker School. Uh, monies generated from the sales will be used for future school projects. So that was at the request of Kathy Tudor, who is the uh, president of the um, EHEF. So, yeah, I'd make a motion to allow that. I mean, I think it's a great idea for mm -hmm. what they're trying to do to yeah. generate some revenue. And, <coughs> and a plaque that's on Booker School right now. Do we have any plans for that? <coughs> no, what do you want it? 
No, it's a historical. <laughs> uh, oh. It really was a historical building, a part of this town for a long yeah, time. We could find I think a historical we should, part. Yeah. You yep. know, I I think we should do something with it. Think about what we're going to do with it. Whether you want to, yeah. whether so the school might want to put it on the elementary school or yeah. something like idea. that, or Hopkins uh, alumni or something want to do something with their bell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, to honor that school, that, that that's a big part of history in this town. Yeah, sure. Maybe take the inside the new senior center that's going in its place, or the, or the library. library. Or the library. library. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the only thing is, I think that whoever's putting together the bid document for demoing demoing that building has to be aware of these things. So if <coughs> no, I, I think this is a, an important issue that yep. we really need to address. I don't know how to yeah. do that, but um, so. yeah, we'd have to let um, Mark Sullivan know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ahead of time. Okay. The hooks, especially, so we yeah. have to go in and yeah. take them out. Are they okay. used right now? Those hooks? Yeah, so they're, they're empty classrooms for the most part. I'm, I'm wondering if we could take them out sooner rather basis, than yeah. later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah just just get them in there and do it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, we have uh, three condolences this uh, this week to the family of Thomas Kelly. Um, that was Larry Kelly's brother that uh, lived here in town, and he has just passed away recently. So condolences to his family. We have a Bernard Aldrich. Um, condolences to his family. And at our last meeting, we had heard, but nothing had been published. Uh, and to the condolences of the Bresca family on the passing of Ron. Um, Ron was very in instrumental as the newspaper. It was a great article in the newspaper last night. Uh, uh, his dedication that he had uh, at Hopkins Academy. <coughs> gone there and went back after going to UMass and teaching there for the remainder of his career and being instrumental as being a baseball coach over there. Um, baseball field is honored with his name there and uh, I was a part of that when I was on school committee. But he really did love teaching there. He knew Ron personally and he was a <coughs> great guy so you know, condolences to his family. Tough family he was. Sure. Yeah. And are we having an executive session? Okay. Before we do that, I'd like to personally oh. congratulate Mariana Rivera. Oh, <laughs> an amazing feat, unanimous, unanimous nod vote. to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, Ron oh, would have yeah, liked that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> so maybe think of it. I'm like, yeah. Speaking of baseball. Speaking for of sure. baseball. All right, the select board will enter into an executive session as per the provisions of MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A, one to discuss the reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than professional competence of an individual or to discuss the discipline of or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual, Hadley Media entertain a motion to go into executive session. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion that we do that. Okay. And you Roll call vote. Roll call <laughs> vote to have a second? I'll second that. Yeah. Right. And we will not reconvene in open session. Mm -hmm. Will Skevitz? Yes. Phil? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Chungla? Yes. All right, you're in executive session. Good night. <laughs>